Hello everyone and welcome in to uh, match 7 of the IHSEA Overwatch 2 season. Uh, it is win or go home for Salem right now. Um, looking to see an excellent match. We have Salem against Downers, the Downers Grove Mustangs. Mm -hmm. Hope everyone uh, watching enjoyed the Overwatch promo. Um, us on the media team, we work really hard on all those. It was a little later than some of the other ones, but it was good nonetheless. Um, what are you expecting from today's match? Hopefully we get a nice win by Salem and a close match make it more entertaining to watch. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have heard from uh, Coach Kyle that this match could be very, very close. The seating is almost identical. Um, with that being said, here is what is going on around the esports room today. Um, so, again, team listed first is home. So the only home team uh, for Salem is JV2. Uh, this is JV's final match. Uh, so looking to win, um, just be one game under 500, go out with a win for both of them. So good luck to them. And uh, Varsity, if Varsity beats... Um, the Mustangs, uh, they will go to playoffs on Thursday, which will be streamed here. But, of course, if they lose, they will miss out on that opportunity. Um, yeah, sorry about our blue screen. Uh, why I decided to wear blue today, so it might be messing it up. Not we'll bad. get it looked at. But we are just going to be sitting here waiting for um, matches to get underway. Again, we thank you all so much for taking time out of your Tuesday uh, to come watch some very good Overwatch. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are new here or if you're just watching to watch, let us know in the chat where you're from. Uh, also in the chat is links to our socials. Uh, I accidentally just posted in there like eight times. But um, make sure you check out our Twitter and our YouTube as well. Uh, we archive our streams on there. And uh, with that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and send it to a break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment.
welcome back in. Uh, if you're just joining us, we have uh, Downers Grove against the Salem Wildcats. Win or go home for both teams. Uh, the team that wins will move on to playoffs on Thursday. Uh, but we forgot to tell you guys this. Um, Branson Pappas is at a track meet. I believe it is the regional track meet. Mm -hmm. So good luck to him. And obviously we have lots of multi-sport athletes. But definitely good luck to him. Hope he's doing well. They left at like 10.30 today or some some crazy early time like that. So he will not be here. Replaced and getting called up is Josh. We saw him last week against Springfield. Mm -hmm. um, he's pretty solid player. Solid. Obviously solid enough to get called up. Be first mm -hmm. up for... So um, uh, definitely they got some games in. But it will definitely be interesting to see how he plays with the rest of our team. Yes. So it looks like we're just maybe waiting. I'm not exactly sure what we're waiting on, but we are waiting. So, yeah. Appears that the first map will probably be Nepal. I believe, yeah. What has the first map been the other times? Do you remember? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's up to choice. You think it, I, th I, thought first, I thought first map was set. Pretty sure first map's set, and then it's choice. Maybe. But it will be... Control. Control. Control will be first map, so it'll be first to two points on control. Uh, again, thank you all for joining with us. Um, if you missed the Overwatch promo, go check out our Twitter. It is pinned at the top of there. Check it out. We did play it at the beginning of stream. Uh, but, yeah, we had lots of fun putting that together. Our players really enjoy all of the media stuff that we do. So make sure to go give it some love over on the Twitter. Also... In big Salem esports news, um, our own coach Griffin Snodsmith, who was a student here, one of the founding members of the esports team, has signed with Heartland Community College uh, to be a Smash player. So big congratulations to him. That is super, super cool that, you know, you can go get scholarships, go to college, do this mm -hmm. stuff. So that is a big, big thing from him. Uh, so make sure to give that post some love on our Twitter as well. So as we just kind of wait for matches to get underway, go ahead and send it back to a break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment.
All right, everybody, welcome back in, and we have Coach Logan joining us, so he'll Hi. be casting with Wyatt as well, so thank you for hopping in. Yeah. Uh, how did the JV match go? Uh, not well, but last week it went not well, and everyone was down the dumps. This week it went not well, and everyone's happy. Everyone hey. had a good time. Hey, so it's go. a, in that, uh, you know, in that regard, it's, it's an improvement. All right, so uh, looks like we're waiting for maybe a caster from... <laughs> Totally forgot what they were called. From Downers Grove. Sorry, guys. I totally <laughs> blanked on what your name was. But um, looks like we'll be getting underway on Nepal here. Um, so any insight on how Nepal works for people who don't know? Uh, with Nepal, uh, the, the, the biggest thing I can think of is, like, for two of the maps, it's a very Brawly-centric like, we have to take point first and then be able to control mm -hmm. that area. Usually you're going to see a lot of May, a lot of Reinhardt, a lot of Lucio. And then for another one of the points, that's Nepal Sanctum, you're going to see a lot more ranged battles. And maybe even some people going for some boop kills. You might see some uh, a Lazy Turtle play some Roadhog. I think he's going to play some Roadhog on Sanctum. I think he's probably going to play Reinhardt or Arisa for the other two maps, I'd imagine. And so um, Branson isn't here due to attract me. No, so, he is not. Uh, do you think Josh will be able to mesh well? I think he will. Uh, in terms of meshing, I don't know. He, he has the same hero pool as uh, Branson does. And mechanically, I would say whenever it comes to aiming, he's even a little bit better than Branson in that regard. But as for meshing well with the team, I don't know. Uh, how well he's going to do in that case. And that's honestly what really matters uh, when it comes to being a support. But it's it just being like able to know what your tank's going to do map now. and being able to keep track of it. So we have Village for the first map by the looks of it. Uh, and again, usually teams like to go to that high ground on the top right. Yeah, they like to take the fight there first. a little bit more first. ranged than some of the other Nepal maps. Yeah, definitely. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, there we go again. Back out. So maybe maybe wrong map. Is it? Is it? No, it's it's the right map. It's Nepal. Controls what we want. Yeah. I think they they have a player gone. Wait, let me. Let's read through the text. Good now. Yes, start. I'm so sorry. We need one minute. Almost ready. Caster, so sorry. Ignore. Ready. Yes. Good. One leave. No. Ready. Well, never mind. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Invigorating stuff. So much stuff. confusion. <laughs> no clear communication no at one knows all. What's going you on. say ready, and then the next sentence is, oh, I'm not ready. Never mind. We might get in the game. <laughs> Eventually. There's, there is a chance. I mean, we are already 15 minutes late, so, <laughs> you know, anything is possible at the moment. It looks like, again, we are still just being patient. So thank you, everyone watching, for being patient with us. Sorry for the delay. Obviously, this is not our fault. We've been ready since um, since match was supposed to start. <laughs> but it looks like we're just being patient here. Um, so any any tips for control? Just how to like get easy first point? Easy first point? You just have to play really well in the neutral a lot of the times especially with these brawl comps you're gonna see you know the may reinhardt lucio in play so the idea is to segment off their tank with the may wall to throw an anti-nade to be able to uh make sure that tank doesn't get any healing and then to chunk down his hp and that's usually the strat that we're probably going to see. If not the May, then you're going to see some other characters like Reaper, Hanzo, uh, Tracer, uh, Cassidy. All, all of these characters to be able to chunk down that Reinhardt's uh, HP really quickly. So would you say uh, Richard would be playing Reinhardt most likely? I am betting my life on it. If I, if he does not play Reinhardt, I will die. Well, it is on stream now, so if, <laughs> if he doesn't play, if he doesn't play, so he's got a lot right. I will draw. I, if he picks another character, I'm just. I'm Man, just John, we'll, we'll, yeah. we will put him off camera before that happens. Yeah, you'll hear a thud, and that's it. All right, so I'll leave it up to you guys as we are on Nepal for first point. See, I don't know if we're actually loading into Village, which is what this screen is, 
or if it is uh, if it just shows this and then it's going to show the other map. I'm interested interested to see if anyone's going to use Widowmaker because I see a lot of Widowmaker on this village map. Oh, it's not village. It's uh, I don't know, I don't know what this one's called. It's called something. And there's the Reinhardt. So Josh won it today. Woohoo! My life remains. <laughs> For today. There's the May. They're doing Far Mercy. That's pretty good on uh, mm -hmm. this map in particular. You have a lot of these high pillars, a lot of these angles that the Far can play around to kind of poke some pressure on the enemy tanks on this point. Looks like Josh will be playing Ana. Mm -hmm. There goes Hayden. Getting a good look at everything. Get to see the other team. Looks like they're playing a Kiriko. Kiriko, Genji, Lucio. Oh, you see that Richard, or Lazy there Turtle, he's Josh. already been burst down. They're going a very divey comp as opposed to brawl. Mm -hmm, very aggressive, and it worked. Looks like they just got most of us taken out right there. And they got spawn. burst down. So what we'd really like to see out of this. Okay, so yeah, Richard, or oh my goodness, Lazy Turtle. He's not going to be able to sustain himself uh, as Reinhardt, which is why he switched to Orisa. It's a lot uh, easier to counter the dive whenever they uh, go on him. Trying to take out that Doomfist now. The May wall's pretty good. They're using the cooldowns on the Richard Doomfist to be able to push him down. But everybody is on like half HP here. Oh, the TP on the points. Great but job, Richard, gets... trying to get rid of this Doomfist. Taking damage from the DPS, though. And his team is gone. Has while, no hope. While Richard was able to stay alive because of the uh, picky swap two, everybody else seemed to kind of crumble around him, you know? And that's what these dive comps are aimed to do. They're not aimed to dive on the tank in sp uh, particular. It's usually the uh, supports. The DPS, these characters that have much lower health pools. Want to dive and separate and pick people off individually. Yep. <laughs> Looks like they have an echo going now. Yeah. Very divey comp. Switching over to Winston. Richard the anti nade's is. really good. Lucio's low. There goes Jordan. There goes our entire team. <laughs> Do we call them by name or do we call them by their gamer tag? Uh, Lomchuk wants us to do name. Oh, name? Okay, so I was right whenever I sang Richard. Yeah, yeah, you're all Oh, good. okay. No, that, that's good of me. Hayden switching over to Tracer. See if this works out. They seem to be, yeah, switching more to a dive-centric comp to go counter-dive, focus some of these supports. Get rid of their Lucio. You see, they're quick. targeting the, yeah, they're targeting the Lucio, first and foremost. But now it seems kind of kind of staggered at who they're targeting. Everybody seems to be kind of looking around and trying to find a new target, and no one seems to be. Hey, no, no, it'll pick anybody off in this. Richard coming in as Winston, Ooh. and he gets taken out really quick. Yeah. Josh waiting up on his team, and there goes our first point. So this is exactly what you don't want to see like the comp that you don't want to go into yeah. if you are a sub on support playing Ana for varsity <laughs> is the comp specifically designed to take you out first and quickly it is going to be a difficult time josh and jordan are not liking this right now no no they are not uh but they seem to have swapped uh their characters Looks all like to dive characters except for the may Looks like we're going to be trying to counter their dive with dive. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ooh. No, they're going back to the the brawl. This might but, work because this map tends to be more favorable to a brawl style comp. Let's see if... But you'll see that Josh and Jordan, they're not playing the... Uh, on a Zen like they were last time. They're playing the Kiriko Lucio, which means they're going to be able to survive for a lot longer. Mustang still playing a very dive comp. Trying to counter right now. Richard doing a great job. Josh keeping Richard alive, as well as Jordan as the Lucio. The Echo comes in, though. 
Beams all of those half HP targets and whittles them down. And they, they take us out and capture the point. See if we can make it back up there without mm -hmm. getting all picked off slowly. Taking a lot of poke damage. It seems like Hayden's going to be swapping here back to the Tracer. And they also swapped off the Lucio onto the Zenyatta. Mm -hmm. That Echo They're coming in doing some big damage to our supports. Huge damage. All whittling down to half HP. The Doomfist dives in in the back, punches them forward, and they all get taken out again. Hayden trying to get a few kills. Gets taken off way too quickly. He gets the Echo down close, but... This again, their their entire team well. is moving as, as a unit. Maybe, maybe the, the profile pictures was was a clue as to how they play. Because right now, the play from Downer's Grove has been pretty immaculate. Yeah, they're all playing as one tight-knit group because they're all dive, so they can just follow each other around. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing we can do about it with our They get a pick, Reinhardt. though. And this opens the door for Salem to possibly take this. Oh, but the like Silas in the has middle. switched over to Bastion. And there goes our team, all taken out in that hallway. Hayden trying to pick off that Echo. Echo gets low, but he's not able to finish it off. Their he should just look just to get out of here job. now. Oh, but he gets staggered. Hayden does have his ultimate now. We might be able to use that, get rid of that Doomfist. Get us a good advantage. Are we able to see the ults? Oh, we are. Josh has Katsune Rush, and Hayden has his ultimate. Richard is getting close to his Earth Shatter. Oh, and he gets stunned. Yep. They swap to the Reinhardt. At this point, they also have uh, there goes the Richard. Echo Rein Shatter. And I think you're going to see the Echo play far. kill up. out of the Mustangs. Oh. That will be a loss on map one, and let's see what the Mustangs play of the game. Mustangs made some relatively quick work of us on this map. This is really, this is going to be really difficult to, for, like I, I know one of the big things that uh, Varsity has to deal with are these dive comps you know comps. like they they do fairly well when it comes to the brawl head-to-head -head. even like poke comps you know they're able to make their distance and they're able to clash it out but against these comps where it seems like you as a player are you know you're playing well and you're, you're doing the right thing but then just someone else gets picked off and then someone else and someone else it's kind of frustrating and i i'd imagine uh, that some of them are feeling pretty frustrated right now because it looked like no matter what they did, no matter what heroes they swapped to, they were facing the, the same thing. These dive comps can be very frustrating because it can feel like you're almost 1v5ing every single time. Yeah. So um, we're going to hybrid next, correct? Hybrid. Yep. And it'll be Salem's map pick. See if they can figure out a so, map that might counter this dive. And when they have lost, or wait, Salem picks side, uh, downers will pick... Uh, map, correct? Or is it... Salem picks map, downers will pick the side. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Salem has been picking a King's Row. <laughs> yes. So we should... I mean, I would be no surprise if... Yeah, that is a pretty tight map, so it might limit the dive that they can pull on us. See, what I would like to see is... You know, King's Row is good for that, but it still has some of those, like, higher angles. High. Yeah. Especially on, on, like, first point and third point. It has those higher angles that I feel like they they could just get pressured out of, you know? Mm, yeah. So maybe even seeing an Eichenwald here. I think that would favor uh, <clears throat> that would favor Salem a lot also. So uh, what would Salem need to kind <coughs> of change? Now that they've seen what Downers Grove, like how they play, mm. what do you think uh, changes need to be made? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> changes, changes, changes. The best thing right now for them to do is worry about getting rid of those supports first. Because when it comes to Doomfist, almost the best way to counter him is just kind of ignore him for a while until you get rid of everyone else. So they need to figure out how to kill those supports. It, it's really... Difficult. It is. Because, you know, whenever you think about uh, their team, like, especially with how I see their team playing so far, I am unsure at which, uh, at what they're going to do to be able to counter this. What I think they should do 
is and you know obviously all of this is easier said than done in the mm -hmm. moment yeah. if a doomfist punches you into a wall you know you you're not going to think of the plan you're going to think of oh how can i get out of this situation yeah, how can I get out of here? so you know sticking to what they were doing i don't think that's a that's a bad thing to try whenever the doomfist goes in being able to wall them off and segment them off especially with a uh, on a map that's not as like that's not as loose and open mm -hmm. like Nepal is. And it seems that they didn't get to play on Village because I feel like that probably would have been their best map on Nepal the as well. Advantage. And it looks like Hayden just put in Numbani. Numbani. Oh, oh. Ooh, this Numbani is a... for hybrid. So this is a new map. Don't think we've seen this one on stream. Uh, any um, thoughts on the pick? I don't uh, dislike it. I do. <laughs> I just don't really know how this can like overly benefit us. I I think if they do a, a different composition, it, it it could be interesting. You know, there, there there could be something that they do with this, but with the comp that they're running now, you know, I I'm not sure if they're going to be able to effectively play brawl into this. Numbani is yeah. one of the most like dive dive maps. It's known for having these large high grounds. They might be playing uh, right next to the, the like, low points. Unless we change something up, we might be playing right into the other team's hand. Yeah. But now that we've seen uh, maybe how they play, we can kind of better assess how to, um, uh, how to counter. counter. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure as soon as we load in, we're going to see some counter picks. I'd love to see. We're probably going to see some Arissa, maybe. Arissa. Arissa Roadhog. or Roadhog. Maybe we're going to see some Brig. That might also help. But... Huh. That Roadhog might be a great way to separate them out by just picking one off. That's, yeah. But it's, it's very difficult to judge. They didn't have an Ana, so I could also see that being a reason why they could pick Roadhog. Running an Ana Brig backline, that could be really good just to keep the Ana alive and to be yes. able to, you know, if the Doomfist dives in, being able to whip shot him back uh, with the Brig. That's always good. And always having the sleep dart as Ana. I think Ana's integral by having that sleep dart to be able to, uh, you know, hold off the push uh, with Doomfist. But it looks like Salem may be on defense here. So as we load into Umbani, uh, about 15 seconds on hero selection. But I will leave it to the fine guys sitting next to me. And all yours, gentlemen. Alrighty. Yep, there's the brig. Well, there's there a, it is. There's Brigitte. Zarya. Okay, so Zarya has a bubble. Her bubble is, or what I'm suspecting her bubble is going to be used for, is since you know Richard hasn't really been dying first. It's been the people around him. He's been able, and that's you know what again dive does. It you know pressures everybody around you, and you know takes them out, and then it takes out the uh, tank. So, being able to bubble your support line or bubble your DPS whenever they get dived on, mm -hmm. I, I, I know, I think that's a, that's a really good counter pick. Hayden switching over to Echo. Echo, again, the counter Echo. We'll have to see how he matches up against their Echo. They seem to be going into the small room, which for the dive, I'm not sure how... Well, that's gonna work, and I think Hayden probably wants to get over there also. Oh no, they're going around the side. They're Echo, pinning over Aiden. They're Doomfist on the point, trying to capture it right now. They're playing Lucio again. And Just Kiriko. seems to jump down, but nobody's shooting him. They dived on Hayden, and then they dived on Silas. Richard keeping that they're... point alive in our favor, but they're just diving on all of our supports and mm -hmm. DPS. Richard almost on on his own right now. And there he goes too. Richard is going to need to save some of these bubbles. He used both of his bubbles way too early. He used one on himself and he used one on Josh, but you could see that he wasn't really the hey, target of the dive. Switching over to a there, Roadhog, yep. see if this will work to separate them off so that they can't dive as a team anymore. Mm-hmm.
Josh playing Moira gets stunned by the Doomfist. Fall back. Doomfist going back in. The Echo putting pressure on the right side. Oh! Richard gets a hook. Nice! And Jordan is able to finish it off with the Shield Bash. See if Richard can pick off any of those supports from that back line with that hook. Hayden trying to get some height. Two Echoes collide. And Hayden's the one that falls. Yeah. Their Echo was able to land a lot more stickies than our Echo was and was able to burst him down quicker. There comes the two ultimates out from Downers Grove, the Echo and the Doomfist ult. Yep. Silas able to get one though. Almost, had, almost got that Doomfist. Headshot to the Lucio. There goes their Doomfist. Great job. Richard nice. getting that kill. Oh, but Silas is being pressured by the Echo. Oh, but he's able to uh, take out the Echo as well. And they're able to stagger the Kiriko. This is looking very good for Salem. Able to move that cart back slowly but surely. Yep. Can I see some throw? Yep. There it is. Okay. I just like the first person view better. Mm -hmm. There's the Brig ult. Stun them. the ult coming out of Richard. pushing them away. Pushing everyone backs. Yep. Yeah. You also heard Silas use his dead eye. Didn't seem to get anybody. Misses that hook. They switch over to Junker Queen. See if this benefits them. Removing from a little bit Some less of a dive. Dry blading. Aiden using his, one of his abilities. Trying to get a kill off, unable to get any picks. And their echo comes in and takes us out. So you'll see now that uh, on this side of Downers Grove, they have swapped to Junker Queen. Junker Queen is going to be able to build off uh, ult very quickly mm -hmm. onto uh, Richard. So that is certainly a problem. And I don't think she's going to be able to die if she's just able to hit all of her abilities onto Richard. Yep. It's going to be a very difficult time unless they uh, Salem counterpicks. But Hayden uses his ultimate to copy their Junker Queen. Trying to pick out someone. Oh, and there's the Junker Queen ult. Seems to be attacking the backline first. Got three people. Two of those were the supports. And there goes a team kill for the Mustangs. This is not looking good for Salem. Jordan as Bridget. More of an aggressive, yeah. but... All of our ults are about halfway. I don't know if we have enough time to charge any of them up, though. No, certainly not. At this point, they're just looking to get back onto the point. Josh doing all, all he can to keep uh, Richard, Richard trying alive. to kill someone, but... Yeah. Nothing's dying, though. Their supports are just doing a great job of keeping their entire team alive, and there's really just no way for us to counter this. Oh my goodness. Very, very difficult. Honestly, here on attack, what do you what, what do you think? What, what, what do you think they should uh, try doing? I don't know. It's really hard... Because we haven't really seen them defend yet, so we don't really know what to predict from them. That is true. On an attack, I really like a sojourn mix in, to the, in there, and I don't know if we'll be doing that. But yeah. The the one time that they were able to win a team fight there was, uh, you know, they used like three ultimates, but they still lost. But whenever yeah. they were able to get a pick onto one of them, you saw Downers grow. They just started to, to crumble around whenever uh, it was left up for some of the more individual talent yeah. on Salem to uh They're such a great a unit, pick. but when you can solo them out, it seems that we can slowly kill them. Yeah. It doesn't matter about the individual skill as long as everybody is working together, mm -hmm. especially on a dive, it's difficult to take anybody out. So I think maybe they should rely on uh, rely on Silas or Hayden, you know, pocket them, maybe with a mercy damage boost, something like that, to be able to whittle them down. Switching over to um, Anna, Jordan. See if this works better as a backline mm -hmm. defense. You see, Silas is also on the Ash now, and Hayden is on the Tracer. They're still playing what appears to be the same comp that they have been. 
Uh, except with a Winston, by the looks of it. They have a Winston now. Yep. You can see the Winston trying to dive the Ash. They're all in the back line, and it looks like Silas needs some help. Silas and so does out. Jordan. They're all coming back to try to peel, but Josh by now, they lost their main alive. source of damage. Josh might get taken out here. And there he goes. This probably means the end of Richard as well. They did lose an Echo, though, and they're going to have a quicker response than the Echo is. They might be able to push here while they're down, while Downer's Grove is down a man. Hayden trying to get some kills as Tracer, see if he can get a nice flank in and get behind them before they can do anything about it. Their Genji is doing a great job, though. Yeah, let's, oh, let's peep the stats on Genji. Yeah. Has the Genji's tied damage. in the kills, but... He's certainly putting up a lot of pressure. And there it is, the dive onto Silas, onto the supports. Hayden, trying Hayden's to heal not up. gonna be able to, to get the point. Richard healing up, trying to get rid of that Genji. Gets taken out from behind though. Yeah. Hayden getting taken out. Well, getting taking damage from their Winston. Yeah. Able here to do a lot of damage to Winston, but he's he's just gonna get staggered here. All of their teams on him, and there he goes. As the rest of Salem is respawning, uh, they're going to have to wait for their Tracer to be able to go in. We're and you very... can see, the, these coordinated dives are, are very difficult to deal with. The Winston's just going to jump away. And Goob gets taken out by the Stickies just from the spam. There's just so much going on for Salem to try and counteract with this dive that we're just not able to do it. All moving as a group now, though. If we can try and stay together, this will yeah. limit our getting picked off. They seem to be waiting on the Ana to come back, though. And after that, uh, they're ta they're taking their time, though. What what's going on here? Yeah, we don't have much time. What are we waiting on? What? Oh. See if he can grab any of those lower health with his misses. Yeah, after gets hitting blocked that. by the bubble. Taking a lot of damage from that Winston and Echo. Grabs the Echo though. See if he can get the kill near. Didn't oh. have any ammo. Wasn't able to shoot him. The past three pushes, it's been... They dive on Silas. They kill him. They dive onto Jordan. They Silas get him. Silas switching over to Reaper now. See and if this works out better. They, they, they just need some amount of peel to deal with this dive. I think Brig, honestly, was the way to go. I don't think Mercy's going to have much success, or as much success here. I think just everybody's going to be struggling to stay alive. Oh, to Richard able to get a pick. Josh trying to keep everyone alive is Kiriko. Their Kiriko ult comes out. Jordan gets taken out by their Echo. Josh still hanging in there, keeping Richard alive. Richard pulls out his ult. There's the beat from Downer's Grove Lucio. There goes and Josh. They just re dive onto the point. And everyone's everyone's getting staggered. They're they're not gonna have enough time to do a final push as a team. Yep. With only eleven seconds left, I don't think. Uh, the only person that can there. touch is the May. The May already has touched. She's going to be taken out. And I don't think the uh, Far is even going to get the opportunity if the Far gets taken out. And that's map two. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you, you, could, you could see there how... I just, I don't think Nubani was a good pick. I, uh, yeah. It, it... It benefits too well into their dive strategy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> their, their dive was just able to thrive in those high grounds. And there were moments where you saw that Richard was able to get a hook or Silas was able to get a pick. But in the grand scheme of things, if you just, you know, it, it's, it's just so difficult whenever their entire team is diving on one person. And it's so difficult for like anybody to get value off of that. Yeah, yeah. They needed to pick a map that more suited uh, what they were going to play, which seemed to be the brawl. Mm. Yep, yep. So, headed into map three, Escort, it is now, like, this match was already win or go home, but now it is really win or go home yep. on their last last life here. So, um, any thoughts about how Salem can improve heading into Escort? 
how they can improve. I'm really struggling to find something because this dive is working so well, and I can't really think of anything that could benefit us. I, uh, I'm, I'm thinking either we're going to play a map that's <coughs> you don't really want to dive on. Route 66, that's a pretty good brawl map. That's Route pretty 66, good. pretty good brawl map. My other thought was Junkertown. A Junker lot Town. of those, like, long angles, long sights, it's difficult for those dive comms to, like, you know, travel around. Obviously, you have the high mobility, but once you get to the place that you're wanting to go, it's difficult to uh, get out of there, you yeah, know? Yeah, maybe if we play a little bit longer range, we can kind of slow them down on their close-up, getting in our faces with that dive. Maybe. Which Route 66 allows that. I think... Brig Anna. Brig, Brig Anna. They need to go Brig Anna. That's, that is my call. I want to see some Brig Anna. I don't want to see the Rodog. The Rodog was good for like a pick, but they're not able to peel for uh, whenever Silas is getting a dive bomb. You, you, and Silas is getting dive bomb. He's the first priority target that they're diving on. Uh, and you saw whenever he was alive in the fight, the one fight they won, it was because Silas got like two nasty headshots. Mm -hmm. So they probably want to play the Zarya here, be able to peel for Silas, bubble Silas whenever he gets dived on, have the break <coughs> on us so the uh, support line can kind of sustain themselves, be able to whiplash the Winston or the Doomfist or the Diva, whoever dives on them, be able to whiplash them back so they're able to survive longer and being able to sleep their main tank. All of these things, they... Need to do it. It seems though, they're playing into a Farah Mercy. We'll see if this works out. It's pretty hard to dive on a Farah because she's in the air. This might benefit us a little bit. That's true. My main concern is with Josh and Silas. And, you know, before it's been, let's dive Silas. Let's dive Jordan. Let's dive Josh. Now, they can't really dive Jordan because he's going to be in the air with the Farah. Richard playing the Junker Queen. I haven't seen him play this before. They're playing um, a new tank in the... Uh... I think they're doing Brawl. Nope. They're doing Ramatra, Genji, Zen. Hayden gets taken out by the Genji. Getting picked off. Josh able to anti the tank, but he still has his nemesis form. Yep, and there he goes. Every mantra takes him out. He's going to be doing way too much damage. Mercy. And all of the supports are already Trying to out. do something here. Richard gets taken out really quickly by that Echo. Hayden switching over to a Junkrat. Great defense. Looks like we're just going to be waiting for him to move. Junkrat's one of your personal favorites, isn't that right? Yep. Great defensive character. Does a ton of damage when you land those shots. Are they going to be able to touch point, though? Yeah. No, they... There's a kill. Hayden gets one kill and then gets taken out. We're playing really far back right now. Yeah, I... They could have had at least another contest in there. <laughs> if they all died quickly and died together... You they might wonder. have been able to contest twice, but instead we stopped deciding. You gotta to, like, wonder if they're ourselves. feeling really a little bit less confident there and just want oh, to definitely. way back rather than get aggressive. Nemesis form coming out of their Rumatra. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do anything about that. Takes out Richard. Genji coming up on Hayden, nothing he can do about it. Looks like we'll be seeing a little bit of Sojourn. More of an attacking character. We'll see if this works out well. We're all waiting again. I don't really know why. Uh, because we had some late deaths. So now we have to wait for everybody to respawn so they can go in as a group. Mm -hmm. Silas, just sitting around waiting to... Now we can charge up that um, railgun on that shield. And that Rumatra, but gets taken out too quickly to do it. They Nanoblade, and he gets three. <coughs> Hayden, really low. You saw Salem also using some ults. 
they used. Hayden has his rip tire now. Hopefully they can let us clear that. Hopefully. They seem to be doing good at uh, being able to focus out and target individuals. So they might even be able to destroy the uh, Richard's switching tire. over now. Oh. There goes Silas. Yep, they just take out the tire. And now they're probably going to be able to take out the junk rat. Yep. Trying yeah, to get rid of that Ramatra. The Ramatra is just playing very well. In the Nemesis form, Hayden's got nothing he can do. Ramatra playing down. He activates his ult. And, and he gets rid of Richard real quick. Silas trying to do something. Has Silas ult. just needs to die here. He just needs to die here. Don't, he can't live for any longer. He needs to die, respawn, and be able to group up with the rest of his team. Jordan playing some Zenyatta. They finally swapped to the Hanzo to be able to counter the Ramatra. Trying to get rid of that. And he succeeds in getting rid of their Echo. Yeah. Jordan does a good job of taking out their Echo. The Ramatra's low. Ooh, Ramatra Richard is able to take the out their back Jordan line. doing a great job of helping everyone out right now. As you saw there, I think Richard charged in, was able to pin one of their backline uh, members, <laughs> and then uh, was able to take out the available. other one. This will allow us to get a better defense in. Uh, it looks like for this next fight, they're going to be closing in on Nanoblade again. So ideally here, they want to save Trans for their Nanoblade. That is a big shatter. Hopefully they can take out Ramacha. Oh, uh, now Ramacha's just going to be targeting... Uh, Try, pulling out that Zenyatta ult, trying to keep everyone alive, is that Ramacha? They're able to get the picks, though, during the uh, during the Earth Shatter. It was a really good Earth Shatter. Hit, like, three of their uh, teammates. And that's one of the weaknesses with Ramacha. You'll see... Uh, Whenever he is in that nemesis form, he doesn't have any form of shield to be able to block these earth shatters. Yeah, he has no way of really defending his teammates or himself. Yeah. Jordan getting a crazy shot onto the Genji. Jordan been doing a great job with that Zenyatta. Mm-hmm. Hayden trying to pick someone off. He does have that ultimate to his advantage, though. Oh, uh, but there is the, the Nano Ramatra ult. Hayden uses his ultimate. I don't know if he got anything out of it, you though. No, he didn't. They were all playing really far back, so it didn't tar uh, get any of them. But honestly, I don't blame him. There is... Very little time left. There's very a little time effort. left, and there's very little you can do against <laughs> that Nano Ramatra ult. He has so much damage resistance, and he does so much damage that it's almost impossible to take him out. And at the same time, you don't want to be next to him. No. No. Oh. We need to move quickly on this one. We need to get yeah. as much time as possible and get to that third point so that we can tie them up. I think, though, that was their best defense. That is the that best was. they've performed by far. And you they're can see the they're, star end. they're starting to slightly warm up. And against the Ramatra, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're doing decent. And Ramatra, I don't know if you've been able to catch any of the varsity streams or see any of their games. They've had, varsity struggled against Ramatra trying to find a counter, but it's definitely good to see that they've kind of learned how to, how to counter. Going back mm. to the Roadhog. See, I can kind of understand the Roadhog here. They, but they are playing an Ana. So as long as Salem's playing a Kiriko, they're not playing a Kiriko. Okay. We're this might be kind Moira. of a throw then. <laughs> the Roadhog is only good if you have a Kiriko. And the only reason they're probably playing him is because when they expect the Nano Ramatra ult, they can just whole hog him away. And and that's that's essentially what I'm, I'm guessing is the We really need here. a Kiriko so that he can babysit that Roadhog. Yeah, because... They're, they were playing Ana last time, they and were. with one anti-nade from the Ana, they're just going to be able to effectively take out that Roadhog. Playing Echo and Doomfist again. Hayden trying to get someone picked off, but their Genji comes out and starts blocking. Hayden 
probably needs to swap here. The uh, Hanzo pick, not too good against the Doomfist. It's not gonna work the Doomfist, well. though, is so low. Hayden it's just needs so to land a low. shot. Oh, and he doesn't. The Doofus is able to escape and, and regain back to full that HP. They're playing as Zenyatta. Orb of Harmony comes on their Doomfist, and there's nothing we can do now. Oh, they don't have an Ana, so Richard should be fine. And honestly, against the Doomfist matchup. Oh, no. Rodark works pretty well. <coughs> <coughs> Richard needs to try and pick off some of those supports in the back line so they can't heal up that Doomfist when he starts taking a lot of damage. Ideally, uh, we'd like to see him hook the Echo. The Echo's been a pain the in the bud for the entirety of Salem. Oh, barely misses the hook onto the... Uh... Trying to get rid of that Doomfist, yeah. gets stunned. Doomfist is discorded though, and if they're able to hook him, they might be able to burst him down. Clicks oh, that Echo and gets the kill. The Genji dives onto our snipers in the back. Trying to get rid of their Genji now. Oh, yeah, that Richard should be so able to. Oh no, oh, Richard! But he gets pushed off by the Doomfist. Oh my God! Oh, there's a, there is another one too. That Doomfist just pushed two of our teammates off. Oh goodness. That Doomfist being a great problem. Hayden still playing. Silas, good kill. Hayden searching for one, getting pressured by the Echo. Honestly, they need to move in here. They they took out one of their supports. Yeah, they need to play aggressive. Right and the now. only support they have is. Is Zenyatta, so they just need to stay alive longer than they're able to kill. Gets Hayden a kill? Gets a yeah, gets a good shot onto the Genji. The Doomfist is so He's low. One HP. Gets taken out. There we go. <coughs> Without the main heals of the Kiriko, the yep. the Downers Grove just were it, you know, they didn't have enough healing to be able to sustain themselves. Richard trying to pick off one of those little guys sitting in that back. Hook. Barely. It was just a little too short to be able to hit some of those. Gets- oh no. Gets the Kiriko almost, but he gets taken out. Hayden now has his ultimate, as well as Josh. Josh trying to get rid of that Echo ultimate. Looks like we have three ultimates now. They have the Hanzo ult, Moira ult, and Rodog ult. And honestly, if I'm just if I'm being completely honest here, I have no clue what they're gonna do with any of these. Yeah, the only thing I can think of right now is using that Roadhog ult to push everyone back, but Uh That might have been a misclick. No, he did that to pressure out the Doomfist and it worked. You got a kill out of it. You got a kill, and that's the Doomfist. All they need to do is gets an assist, not get pressured but gets down. Heavy hit by the engine. <coughs> they don't have any heals, they're not gonna be able to sustain. The Genji and Echo making quick work of the back line. Richard trying to get rid of that Echo every chance he can get. Richard needs to just get out. He's going to get staggered, and they're not going to have enough time to live. Richard's super low. And you can see low. that Jordan's trying his best to keep Richard alive, but he just needs to get out of here. Get rid of that Kiriko. He almost gets the Kiriko. Oh, and they use Transcendence because of it. That's kind of big. But the only ult that they have now Hayden's is the Kiriko over to Genji. <coughs> but there's only 12 seconds left. I don't know why we're playing slow. They need to use the Kiriko ult, or not the Kiriko. Oh, but their Echo oh. sitting in the spawn, waiting to take out <laughs> the people who just respawned. And there it is. There it is. So, unfortunately. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Downers Grove. Definitely a very. Competitive last map didn't go the way of Salem, but yeah, his play of the game comes out from Hyper Shadows Ramantra. And we saw this play from the other end of it. There's just nothing you can do against that. Mm -hmm. It is just so unfortunately that is the end of Overwatch. Uh, maybe a little, maybe a little heartbreaking as they picked, started picking up some momentum um, near the end. But um, what are any final thoughts? Any, I mean, it looked like Salem was starting to pick up some momentum there near the end, but it was like too late. It, it's just honestly, let's do, let's do some, some scouting. Yeah. Yeah. I think these guys are just really good. 
just, <laughs> and it's not to say that our good. our uh our, our our varsity isn't but just sometimes uh you, you could definitely see with the genji and the echo mm-hmm. that, that echo those was... individual performances they were just they they were able to just take out the uh supports and the echo was a Constantly. big big problem mm-hmm. lots of lots of um e limbs from that so uh it's just hard when you go in thinking the team's gonna play one way and you're gonna counter it with another way, and then and then they play completely different. They way play completely. Yeah. They play dive right out the gate, and, mm-hmm. you're, and they just stuck oh with crap. it. And yeah. we just couldn't think of anything to stop it. I think. I wish they didn't choose Numbani for the second map. I feel yes. like they could have even had a more competitive game if they chose Kings Row or if they chose Eichenwald. Yes. Choosing Numbani, it, 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 it's just. With how good uh, they saw their dive, I don't think they should have done that. Yeah. Uh, but you saw Route 70, uh, 60, 70, yeah, Route 66. 66. Yeah, uh, that went a lot better, especially on defense. On attack, they weren't able to get as much momentum. Yeah. You saw them get a, a couple of picks, and they were able to move the card a little bit. But in the grand scheme of things, they just they weren't able to get everybody alive on their team take out everybody on their team and the ultimates that they had with the characters that they played they were all playing personal counter picks and what they thought they were going to be good yeah, but none of, none of the really characters calm. meshed yeah none no. of them meshed together i whenever we saw what ults they had up uh on the side of downers grove i could think of a million different things to do with this but whenever we had the hanzo ult the uh roadhog ult the moira ult those three, they, just, they don't really work together. Yeah, either. no, they don't. <laughs> There's not really one thing that you can do to like combo with each other. Whenever they were doing the like honor a matra Genji stuff, you know, you can nano the matra, you can nano the Genji, uh, and both of those are play winning ults. Mm-hmm. But it, it just some of the the the, the compositional choices from uh, Varsity. It was like we were just. Taking a last ditch effort, trying to get anything we could. Yeah, yeah and with and with, with you saying players not meshing, it almost makes me think that comms were not at the forefront. It was this is what I think, and everybody was doing what they thought was good, and so it wasn't a cohesive thing. Like Downers Grove mm-hmm. did a fantastic job of doing they every theory. play every character they picked was could, worked well with the next one. Yeah. I I know personally from experience, whenever I work with the uh, JV team, sometimes you say, okay, going into this match, I want you guys to play this, and then this is our win condition. You guys are going to build this ult, and you're going to win this team fight with these ults. And then sometimes, you know, they start playing the match, and if they're getting just completely destroyed, then they're like, okay, we need a counter swap. And sometimes it's good to do that, but sometimes it just completely changes how you have to play the game. And sometimes the counter swaps, they just don't meld well together. And I think with the case of Varsity, they uh, they put counter swapping higher than being able to play for a win condition, and not being able to win some of those team fights together as a unit. It it made it so it was difficult to do anything. Yeah. So um, with coaching the teams, are you allowed to have contact in like? Throughout the match, or is it just before and after? Uh, just before and after. So you're able to do it in between the maps, in but whenever maps. they're swapping, like during the match, no. If they're mm. swapping sides, no. So it's it's difficult because you can't like you know they start swapping things around, and even if you tell them not to, and you can't be like, oh, don't do that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I bet that bet that's frustrating to standing behind them and going, oh, you really shouldn't pick that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a bit annoying, but at the same time, you know, at least with JV one and JV two, they're trying to experiment with the game and they're trying to learn about it. With varsity, it really needs to be ingrained in their head. We need these win conditions, and we need to win this way, because if we get into a situation where we just can't do anything, then, you know, like what. What are we gonna do? <laughs> and uh, one bright side or sil- silver lining, however you call it, is our varsity team is very young. We only have one yes. person graduating out. Everyone else will be back. Unfortunately, the person graduating out is Richard, our tank. So kind of a pivotal part of our varsity team. There are quite a lot of players from JV1 and JV2 though that have shown 
great amount of skill, great attitude, great coachability overall, and have just been playing the game so much that I'm sure we'll be able to find a perfect fit and be able to build uh, the varsity team even better next year. So uh, with that being said, thank you all for tuning into these streams. Again, they will be archived on our YouTube channel if you ever want to go back and watch. Maybe just reminisce. I don't know what you want to do with them, but they're there. Um, but yeah, unless you guys have really anything to add, we can go ahead and kind of shut it down. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. All right, I've so again, thank you guys for joining with us. It was lots of fun. Definitely good to have a little better insight from me who has like probably four hours in the game <laughs> compared to you guys which have, you know, hundreds of hours in the game. Yeah. And it's good to have some little more professional insight, if you will. Uh, but yeah, again, all hope's not lost because our varsity team, a majority of our varsity team will be back. Um, but yeah, good luck to Branson. He missed mm -hmm. today for a track meet. Good luck to him. It's probably already you over. You got this, man. It's probably already over, but again, good luck to him. We always like having our our eSport athletes also participate in actual sports because touching grass is important, or so they tell me. <laughs> I guess. I don't really know. What's the sun? Anyways, um, so... <laughs> So again, thank you all for joining us. Again, one more time, make sure to follow us on Twitter and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and with that being said, I will go ahead and leave you guys with our Overwatch promo. Uh, so again, enjoy. Um, thank you for taking time out of your Thursday to hang out with us for about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, have a good rest of your day.